Willkommen. 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 Du. Another episode of <laughs> Drive into the Res with your favorite hosts, Inelia and Larry. And Larry. Yes. Yeah, we just got out of German class. We did. Welcome, Welcome in. We got Welcome it. In. Welcome in. You know, there's a few words that are a bit complicated, right? Yes. You hear them and then you go, <laughs> and the grammar, the way the things are like one together. and the other than the other, Super the whole sentence is structured completely different. Yeah. Super interesting. You know, yeah, it's really so interesting. We're deconstructing the fear processing exercise, yeah. translating it from English into German. Then German we English. English speakers read the German after someone teaches us how to say the words. And then we deconstruct how it's said in, in German, German to using translate the it translators into like wiggled around. So yeah, it's pretty fun. I mean... I don't it's know if it fun. sounds fun, but it actually is fun. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. 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 <clears throat> so the other thing that Welcome. I noticed is um, before German class, you might have like seven things to do and got things on your mind. And maybe your frequency is running about maybe six or seven or three or even. Out of ten. And yeah. And then at the end of class, you're back to ten. Yeah. It raises your frequency. It does. Yeah. yeah. So if you're needing a uh, frequency booster... Go to walk with me now and take German Go class. Go to walk with me now and take German class. I'm sure it's the same with the French class. Oh my God, yes. Because at the end of French yeah. class, you guys are all giggling and yeah, laughing. Like a, yeah. And I'm sure it's the same with the Spanish, yeah? Yep. Well, I don't know. I haven't been to the Spanish class. I don't know if there's a Spanish class. Oh, you I just know have there's an English Spanish. class. You just have a Spanish group. Group. Yeah, that was very, very cool. Very nice. So if and you're then... a Spanish speaker, you might join the Spanish group or can you? Even... Oh, yeah. Walk with me now. Go to there. Oh, you can find the Spanish group at Walk With Me Now, yeah, too? Yeah, yeah. And then um, we have English class. So people who don't speak English very well, they can go to English class and Walk With Me Now. Wow. High frequency English class, who knew? Okay, I guess, <laughs> I guess that covers all the classes. Yeah. And those ones cost, how much do those cost? They're included, I suppose, because all the it's the members that are organizing all this. So It's kind of like what Walk With Me Now was about. kind of designed to be about. about absolutely, right. yeah. Yeah. The me and walk with me is you. You, yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see a thing come together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I really did enjoy class today. It was fabulous. Fa fabulous. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I know we're supposed to end our podcast in French. Remember? Oh yeah. Uh huh. Oh, that's right. But. I didn't write down the sentence I'm supposed to say. Well, hopefully you can remember between now and then. Oh, my goodness. Because it's going to be important. You can't end yeah. it in English if you have to end it yeah. in French. So you better je, tap into your memory. Je ne, je, um, uh, je ne, mon chéri. Je m'en mon chéri. Something like that. Okay. <laughs> well, we're not the end yet. I don't know. I probably said I am love, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, part of it is to learn the language, I'm sure. A large part. But, you know, a large part of it is to raise your frequency and join in. Um, Funnily enough, though, we are learning the languages. Yeah, there's a, part, just, to, there's yeah. a part to it. I, didn't say it's, it I mean, it's slow, but it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, we know Fabelhoft. Yes. Is that the right way? I don't know. <laughs> Fabel I know Bilt Bilkamen. <laughs> Bilkamen and Fabelhoft. Fabelhoft yes. is fabulous. Yeah. Or something like that. Something like Pretty that. Pretty sure it's Fabelhoft. Yeah. That was our favorite word of the day. Yeah. So yeah, just the, really the mere joining in and focusing on a high frequency thing with high frequency people raises your frequency. It's, it does. It's amazing. Amazing. Really amazing. Plus, it's funny to listen to Lee. <laughs> speak german with his english accent he is yeah. he's, he's got a very good english accent in he's german got a very excellent german english accent yes i have no but, idea what our accents are yours is extremely good i'm suspicious <laughs> <laughs> what's funny too is uh you learn, how you good learn. we are at translating the words into english mm -hmm. He's in the chat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so our teacher was saying, when, when what do you think this means? And our, well, other, somebody teacher, and our other teacher is translating and putting it in the chat. So we just look, so it's like, hmm. And then we look at the chat a little bit. Like, Could oh, it be yeah. about like this? And she's and like, she said, oh, very good. Oh, you guys keep kidding this. You're so good. <laughs> <laughs> Until I gave the game away. You gave the game away, yeah. And then she started I shouldn't have said slower. anything. <laughs> 
quite fun. Yeah. So, anything on your mind this week? Yeah, um, our last podcast, last Monday's podcast, about, um, are you done with this stuff, right? I had enough of this, that energy. Yeah. It's had a lot of feedback. It's had a lot of people, you know, talking about it. But also, one aspect that I've noticed this month, this week, is that it's an energy of being really, really angry about stuff even the tiny little things getting triggered very irritated it's very an irritable, short fused ir remember the energy coming up from california <sighs> yeah that i kept trying to express but i couldn't quite get the words it was like um irritated was part of it um upset um anxious right on, the edge. on the edge they had all these words that came close to it but there was nothing quite describing it yeah and that's what's been happening to us now. Um, physically speaking, I haven't been very well the past week. I've been having high fevers and things like that most of, most days uh, with headaches and things. Uh, my chest was hurting. I hadn't done that for for a long time um, with the lungs, not the heart or anything like that. Right. Um, my lungs were pretty weak. Um, and I've been using the Browns gas to, to help, and it has actually helped quite a lot. But, yeah, it's, it's been that amount of stuff, and I've been very interested in looking at the energy of health and how that is changing. We talked a little bit about that person who talked in a podcast about remote viewers. A man did a research about with remote viewers, about a thousand of them or something, looking into... 2050 right and one of the things that really struck was that to me was that there was no sickness that people people were no longer sick and to me that represents a shift that represents a very big part of the new paradigm and changing our concept of what health is and what sickness is is key and i think that the person leading one of the people the individuals leading this into the new paradigm is dr cohen and friends right they are mm -hmm. leading the new viewpoint of what health is forward and it's again it's not like completely new because health systems <laughs> like so the this chinese is 1910, ancient, 1920 yeah no i'm talking about ancient chinese medicine and ayurveda 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 I can't remember the name, but the Indian the, and the shamanic <coughs> medicines, Manic. all of these were were um, medicines that were closer to the core issues of the human condition, right? And you might think, well, if shamanic medicine was so good, why did so many natives uh, from all over the world die from yeah. from all these European diseases? And one of the reasons, and I know this from history, family history, one of the first people that the conquerors killed when they reached a new place were the healers and the shamans and the wisdom keepers. They did that on purpose. And, um, uh, and then they demonized them. And of course, this is also translated in the, um, the, the burning of witches all over Europe. This is what they were doing, right? They were killing the knowledge and the wisdom kept and the, and the lineages that kept this wisdom on the planet, which is how to keep ourselves healthy, long lives and healthy, right? And when I looked at things such as um, the, the length of time people live mm -hmm. and the health that they have and... One of the things, like dogs, for example, um, I remember somebody saying to me, um, oh, you know, cats and dogs, and they have these, oh, yeah, your German Shepherd's average lifespan is about 12 years, something like that, right? Right. And uh, larger the dog, the shorter the lifespan. And I remember a friend of mine from England, and her cat died at, after 21, 22 years old or something like that. 
right? Mm -hmm. And I remember my grandpa's cat when I was six years old and he died. And he was like ancient, like 30 years. And he was walking around and everything, you know. <laughs> and I saw a movie or a documentary. I can't remember. And this guy was saying... I don't understand why all these lifespans are saying like 15 years or 12 years, 18 years for dogs when I remember as a fact when I was a young man, and this was an older man, mm -hmm. when I was a young man and I was a kid, our dogs used to last 30, 30 years, you know, or more. Wow. So what happened? And the other guy said, well, it's kibbles. Oh, the kibbles. The kibbles happened and vaccinations happened and now they have to normalize the early death and sickness of all these dogs and all these things that are happening to them they've got to normalize them right and i was thinking well what about humans and one of the i remember when i was in vilcabamba uh, in ecuador they talked and it was normal for the local people that lived up in the mountains or whatever to live way past 120, 130, you know? Don't know. And they, they would say, oh, you know, trying to say, why? Oh, it could be water. The water somehow has something in the water. Or maybe it's the diet. You know, and these guys, one of the guys is like, that thought it was the diet, went to interview this man and says, what do you eat? I eat rice and beans. And that's what I eat because that's all you can grow around here, rice and beans, you know? And so it was like, mm, probably not the diet <laughs> yeah but this guy who was really into diet said that's it right so that's all he would eat um so to me the viewpoint of what health is is completely radically going back to its original knowing and wisdom that human collective had coming in and the supportive environment is a supportive environment rather than a toxic environment and uh, I was watching the the health event, a recording from the health event that Dr. Cohen and friends did uh, last weekend, and immediately began there, right? Mm -hmm. The toxicity of our environment and why do people get sick is because it's a period of ex exuding, like getting rid of the toxins in their body when it becomes too much, right? And right. the amount of toxins, I mean... I only listened to two minutes of this lecture and the guy had mentioned a hundred toxins already of everyday things, you know, like, okay, all, all the, everything that's plastic in your house and we live in a, in an RV and everything is plastic in it. Everything is, exudes the, those chemicals that give you all of these poisons into your body and you breathe them in, you touch them, it comes in through your skin. And it was so like the fire retardant, retardants, Everything's covered in fire retardant, and that is extremely poisonous. It's worse than lead. It actually lowers your IQ, and it even children's pajamas are covered in them that you can buy at the store. And it's like what? <laughs> I was looking at it. Yeah, the toxicity, which is funny because just a couple of days earlier, I was thinking about how toxic the world felt right now. Mm -hmm. Not just at a chemical level, but also energetically. And it will go back to that feeling of, that intense feeling of um, irritation. That's, a, that's frequency, that's energy, that's like an electrical mm, thing, like um, waves that come through, coming through, right? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, oh, it'd be nice, maybe it's because we have so many Wi-Fi's and and radios and whatnot, TVs and stuff in the house, at the shaman shack or whatever. But we switch them all off at night, right? So you should be able to get that level and um, time of peace, right? So your body can repair, detox, and all that type of stuff. Yep. But it's not happening, right? It's like at night, it's very stressful. You wake up stressed and all these things just compounds and compounds. And I thought, well, we could go to the land maybe. Um, and when we were there, it's like, it's no different. You know, it's in the air. It's like being broadcast. It's blanketed. It's blanketed. The whole place is blanketed with these energies. And if you're not aware, you start blaming other people, people situations. You. Oh, such and such didn't say thank you or they keep attacking me or blah, blah, you know. 
we externalize the feelings to and we demonize other people and you have to be very aware and conscious of who are you demonizing when these things are happening because mm -hmm. if you're indulging in low frequency things it's very very likely that the people that you demonize are the highest frequency people in your environment because that's what it's designed to do right attack the non-vaccinated people blame them for everything blame whomever right mm -hmm. and if you're indulging in that negative thing it's not like who is response able who is re able to respond to this Who's, who caused X, Y, and Z, right? If I feel irritated, angry, and upset at a group of people, I have to think, okay, I'm, a, I'm the common denominator here. So what am I doing that is annoying the crap out of me when they, whatever, right? Mm. And I look at it and think, oh, yeah, I was totally indulging in such and such an energy, which I, I was doing unconsciously, and I see it, and I drop it. Mm -hmm. And what happens then is like freedom. Freedom happens. But the underlying annoyance, energy, scratch, you know, poking is still there because it's artificial. Right. So to me, when this used to happen to me in the past, I would go to a mountain, a high, high up in a mountain, or I would go to an ocean and get in the water no matter how cold it was. I just get in the water. Right. You to me, be serious about it around here. Salty water or, or like mountain vibrations were the best. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, funnily enough, we were listening to something about ions. And I was reading out. Oh, you? Yeah, to that's you, right. Honey. You were reading a book to me about ions. About right? ions, yeah, negative ions, which isn't the bad kind. No, it's, it's actually like the good ions. stuff for you. It's good for you ions, even though it says uh, negative negatively ions. charged. It's just ions. the negatively charged ions. Yeah, and electric. Terminology. They have them around waterfalls. Have them ocean around ocean shores. Have them. Uh, um, oh, if you have an ionizer in your house or a yeah. Himalayan salt crystal yeah. thing with the light in it mm -hmm. that emits those negative ions, and those uh, generate a feeling of well-being and That's happiness right. and yeah. And uh, most of our inside of our houses, the heaters and the walls and the things like that generate positive ions, mm -hmm. which creates that other feeling. Yeah. With electro, electrical appliances, electronics, the Wi-Fi's, the computers, the things like that, those also generate positive ions, which also creates that energy. positive ion. Yeah. Kind of doesn't make you feel um, good. No. It's just kind of like malaise and mm -hmm. I guess the transmitted irritated, feeling irritated, yeah. yeah. So that's kind of why when you go to the seashore, you're breathing in all these negative ions and it elevates your mood and you feel like things are right in the world again. Yeah, or you go right. to a waterfall, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah. There were a few other ways to generate those ions, which help your mood. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to be hard. You can make it easier on yourself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you don't have an ocean by you and you don't have a waterfall by you, which is, I think, most everybody has one or the other. I guess in the desert no, they you don't, don't have a waterfall. No, they don't. So in the desert, are they all crabby all the time? Well, I remember probably, being kind of crabby probably, in the desert last yeah, time we were there. Probably, yeah. Remember the only sense of relief that we finally got was when we finally got to the ocean and went to the beach and went down oh on the rocks God, and just sat so there good. in the stones yeah. for a half hour, hour. Yeah, we did. Yeah. It made a mountain of a difference. It did. A huge difference. So there, that must, oh, the rain. Rain brings in the negative ions too. That's right, yeah. Because the moving water. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look into getting an ionizer for in our house. Since we have a house that's a bit plasticky and a bit um, computery and a bit, um, mm -hmm. you know, positive two. ion generator. We have a positive ion generator for our How many house. devices do we have here right now? One, two, three, four, five, six devices. Seven, eight, yeah. nine. And I haven't put it in. <coughs> Ten. <laughs> it's even the electrical Wires. The, all the lights as well, all the this new low, LED you know, the lights are blinking like a million times yeah, a second. Yeah, those are very irritating to your system. Yeah, so to compensate for that in our living environment, we'll figure out how to generate negative ions. Yeah. So we'll get some of those salt lamps, which we have at the Fossil Beach. I have one. Yeah, Remember have how one nice that is? It has a song yes. goes with it, and it yeah. makes that warm glow. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, an ionizer. Ever that is. I, I used to have them. I used to have those in California. 
Mm. In the bedrooms, I would put those little machines that you put in, and they uh, ionize negatively, uh, iron, negative ions coming out. Like the words is all wrong because it's good for you. Um, and I remember one of the things that used to happen uh, when I bought those. They said just put your nose right close to it and you can smell the the mountain. Nice. I thought I wonder if it's true and I, I did and you could. And one of the things that I found to be fascinating is that under the ionizer, uh-huh. the whole wall and the floor was covered in black particles, and I couldn't understand why that was. Yeah. And it's because it's like the the the, the positive ions, um, like the the heavy metals, they they are covered the air in the air, whatever they're floating around. Oh. And when it becomes neutralized, it, they fall to the ground or something like that. I can't remember exactly. I researched it at the time, but it was mm. something like that. But if you know what that is, and I'm wrong, then you can totally put it in the comments. <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of irrelevant. We'll get an ionizer and or two. And we were going to put one that puts out a little bit of humidity by the intake to our heater. So when or not we use that heat- heater at all. That really messes me up. I'm like a canary. If something's bad for you, I'm going to get sick real fast. <laughs> <clears throat> well, that was my solution. Yeah, I don't think it's It'll be work. like, it'll moderate the effect. I don't think so. Do you know why? Do you don't like know why. why? If you put the humidifier next to the intake, when the thing heats up, the steam goes up out the chimney. There's no chimney for this thing. Oh. All it is, it's going to suck air in that's cool and moist, and it's going to exhale air that's warm and moist, and positive and negative ions would be more balanced mm. because there's no chimney. The chimney is for the propane. <laughs> what we're having an issue with, and it said it in the book, mm-hmm. which is that Air, forced air going through these vents. And they've things, always made me sick. Makes forced air positive heat. ions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, either way, we can we can experiment with a couple of things and see if we can figure out a way to make it yeah. so it doesn't. Yeah. I because... fill the place with plants because I know they help, but mm. maybe we don't have enough plants in here. Well, maybe when we make our little greenhouse thing on the front that door, we can leave, leave that open. open. It'll be full of yeah, plants. Positive or negative art. You know what I'm saying. Yes. The negative ions, which the are positive The negative ions, you. which makes you feel good, yes. will be coming in through the plants, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. It's worth yeah. a try. Yeah, we can try it. Just do the things that help you feel better. Yeah. You're um, helping yourself keep your frequency higher, which is your job. Yes. Right? Isn't exactly. that your main job? That is it, your main job, yeah. So theoretically, we should go out in the backyard and build a mud house with no wires of electricity yes. in it and not have any... Exactly. And then just live in there? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my goodness. You got it. Or at least have one for a refuge. Yeah. Somewhere you can spend spend an hour or two two in it so that you can let your body have that break. Break. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or have a waterfall in it. Mm Mm-hmm. Or something like that. So this conference, if you can, we'll put the link to it. You have to buy it, download the recordings, because it really explores a lot of things that we have to be aware of to to change our concept of reality and the reality of health on the planet. Right, it's because very important every, as far res- as I'm concerned. every response that we have right now is pre-programmed to be, you're sick and you need medicine. Yes, but that's and it's not a virus. The fact. Well, yeah, but well, that's also definitely... One of them. Yeah. You're sick. You need medicine. Yeah. There's no other. There is no other. It's that. <laughs> That's right? It, yeah. That's the answer. Is sick. You need medicine. Yeah. Or you need a vaccine to stop you getting sick. Right. But it doesn't even explore the concept of energy or like this little, the sound. What's right. the sound things? What are those called? The tuning forks? Tuning fork therapy. Right, we're listening to a lady talk about her tuning fork therapy, and she's been doing. She was doing massages for thirty years. Yeah, she is. And while she's doing massages, she experiments with whatever you know shows up, and she says, "Hey, that's interesting. I'll check it out." And so mm-hmm. she checked out these. Ding, the sound therapy things. Thing. Yeah, and while she was doing it, she noticed it worked, and she had feedback from it. It was like something that she really, I guess, you can only use the word resonated positively with, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
And uh, yeah, it's fascinating. I can't wait to try that to yeah. see. You know. Yeah. I mean, you give the body half a chance, and it will survive. It's one of the things that I've always said. I mean, bodies are very like, resilient and they will give them a chance, give them a bit of support and they'll respond extremely positively. Right. Very positively. I mean, I was told I would never have use of my hand and I can use it. Right. I was told that my brain damage would never, it's impossible to fix it. And you saw the other day, how many numbers did I? It was stunning and you were so happy. Yeah. I think it was a complete phone number. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Very good, honey. Yeah. So it does work, you know, but we need to change our concept of what health is and realize that viruses don't exist. Realize it. Well, to say that viruses doesn't exist isn't exactly the right way to think about it. Just that viruses that are being shown, this is a virus thing. It's not a virus. It's not a causative agent to make you sick. There's things that people call viruses. That right? look like a virus and they call it, they that's call a virus. It, that's a virus. That's a response. They look like a virus because they told you that what's, that's what a virus looks like. Precisely. Yeah. But in fact, it's something completely different that the body's doing, right? Yes. And exuding and getting rid of, but it's not the actual thing that's making you sick. Right, exactly. Yeah. So the other thing is to, um, when you figure out another, um, I guess, narrative, another story that goes along with the experience of um, getting sick, mm -hmm. and you have another narrative saying, oh, I'm flushing, maybe that might be flushing my toxic load. Yeah. What do you do to support that? Exactly. Versus how can I stop myself from flushing my toxic load? You can see where that's going to lead if yeah. you stop yourself yeah. from flushing your toxic load. It's what does that mean? Your toxic worse is worse and worse. So then it has to be excreted in an even worse or harder, diff or, more difficult way. Yeah. So if you're regularly, I guess, um, releasing the toxic buildups in the ways that your body releases the toxins, then you're less likely to need a um, big one, mm -hmm. a big dump. Right. And big dumps, they still aren't going to be probably necessary if you have like a full systemic overload of electricity, because guess what? Our environment is electrical everywhere mm -hmm. around us. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go and everywhere you see, everywhere you see, everything is run by electricity around us. Mm -hmm. That is a toxin. Yeah. Well, not so much. It's a, it's a, um, it disturbs the electric connection that you already have with the planet, for example. Oh, definitely. By overwhelming yeah. it yeah. with a different load. Yeah, nice. So it needs to be detoxed, I guess, in a way. Mm -hmm. So the way that we detox is um, fever. Sweat, you know, the other ways that you eliminate fluids and solids from your body. And if those aren't enough, then you have uh, all the water in your body goes from jelly state to liquidy state and it flushes. Mm -hmm. And that looks a lot like you're sick. Mm -hmm. Dehydration and death. Dehydrated, and you can get dehydrated and die if you dump all your water and you don't mm -hmm. replenish it. But yep. if you're supporting your replenishment of the fluid, you'll be fine. Yeah. Acknowledging if you're um, like doing a bit of detox every day. In other words, like you sweat. Sweating's a good one, right? Yeah, yeah. You raise your body temperature through exercise. You take a run up the mountain to go get you some food instead of just <laughs> sitting at the bottom of the mountain and waiting for somebody to go to the top of the mountain to get the food. <laughs> you either go to the mountain and get the food. You use your body like it's designed, right? Then that little bit of sweat exudes a bit of the toxins and it continuously happens over the period of time you don't have to have a big dump right but the world that we live in and the reality we live on you know occasionally these big dumps are going to come so you can make them more comfortable for you but you can also acknowledge hey a little bit of heat a little bit of fever it's what my body needs to flush mm -hmm. so allow it to happen and if i need some rest i can turn it off for the night and get some rest and then let it come back in the morning maybe yeah I can rest a little bit, allow the flush to happen. I can uh, kick my feet up, mm -hmm. read a book, 
yep. those kind of things. Just support the process instead of blocking it. Yep. Yep. Which is to say also, people do die from their toxic overload trying to flush. Yes, they do. And some people die from slipping on their stairs. Yes. Some people die from crashing their car. Yep. People die from a million, jillion things. Yep. Those are um, points that you've put in to exit. Yes. Right? Yes. They're not an accident and they're chosen. Exactly. Yeah. They're chosen for whatever purpose it is that you made these choices. Sometimes, I suppose, in your plan, you can make a choice that is the doesn't support your plan. And you say, oh, damn it. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> now it's messed up my entire now life. Now messed up my entire plan. Planned. Now I have to start over. You yeah. know, that's like, oh, you have to start over. Yeah. Or you have to shift your plan or whatever. I mean, those things are as yeah. part of the existence, right? Right, right. But for the most part, most of the time, exits are chosen and methods of exit are chosen also that are supportive of your life plans. Mm -hmm. And I don't say life plan, but life plans, because you plan for more than one life. Oh, yeah. Usually it's not just one life that you plan. It's several, you know, ten, hundred, thousand lives. Multiple lives that build on lives. another and support another yeah. person, and another person, and another person, and your joint plan together, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Yeah. So this is to say that um, it's, that's, it's like that. Saying from Cliff, it's fatal, but it's not serious. <laughs> right. <laughs> it does feel serious. It does feel very serious, yeah. But it actually is not. Right. Yeah. Tough one. Yeah, it is. So if you find yourself sick, usually you ask, how is this supporting or serving me in some way? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's several things. Last week we talked a little bit about that, you know. Um, what to do when you find yourself you're sick. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked in last week's episode, we talked about um, the balance, you know, being in, out of balance or balanced. The main one that I use that I forgot to talk about last week was how is this serving me? Mm -hmm. Right? How is this condition serving me? And I've talked about this quite a lot, especially from the brain damage or the, the the inability I have to use my hands um, for very long. Like the other day, I, clean, I cleaned, I used the, the the blower thing to clean the front of the house and our outdoor tub area and our labyrinth, our portal. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed it. I was thoroughly enjoying the whole process of it. But when I finished, I noticed that I couldn't use my hands anymore. They were over. Right? <laughs> you used the, them up. I used them up, you know. The, it was too much, and I tried to drink a glass of water, and I dropped it because I couldn't hold a glass of water. <laughs> I hope you didn't use one of the thin glasses. No, no, it was a one mug. One of the tough ones. Actually, it doesn't matter if it break, drop, drop it. It was a mug. Okay, good. Um, I saved it, but it's like, oh, dang it. <laughs> So how does it serve me, right? How does that serve me? Mm -hmm. How does it serve others? Uh, from perspective, from typing in a little bit on the energies, my going through that served uh, me in a way of um, I, I got more energized of being more persistent with the Browns water, mm -hmm. uh, the AccuCure machine. Because it does feel it, and I think that there's a couple of other things that I can do that will also go ahead and do it. How does it serve? Um, well, those conditions, the conditions of my arms being like that, no longer serve me. Um, I don't. I'm not gonna be like climbing rock faces in mountains without ropes anymore. So it's not gonna stop me doing that. No more I'm not gonna soloing. become obsessed with music to the detriment of everything else mm -hmm. right including health <laughs> mm -hmm. so it does no longer serve me i don't have that type of energy anymore of behind those obsessions and um um so i can actually cure it now 
So all of the other is like a story, like a history or like a believable healing story for me. I was just looking for that and I found it. Uh, how is this week's temperatures and everything and feeling unwell served me? Um, like I said, in a way, I'm like the canary. I'm extremely sensitive to energies and things. So if something affects me, I will look at it. But if it's affecting somebody else and they're going crabby or whatever, it's, I, mostly I just ignore them. You know, I'm, I'm not really looking at what's going on, right? What, mm-hmm. What's causing this? Um, because it's like that's their job, <laughs> right? It's not my job. Um, so to me, it served in a way that I could become interested in the pulse of the human collective again to check out, hey, what's going on here? Um, also, I know that I have certain likes and dislikes about life on Earth. And when I put kind of quote, put up with unquote stuff that I don't actually like, sometimes I have to retreat and have me time or, or like less toxic time, right? And um, it feels like becoming aware of all these toxins is very important, both for us and for everybody who's listening to what we do and say. So I knew coming into this RV that we're living in that it was toxic for me. I knew it was toxic and I put plants up and I have a um, air purifier that I, you know, I keep forgetting to turn on. But at first I was very diligent putting it on all the time. Of the off gassing that is in here, including the artificial lights and the, the what is that, those type of lights that the modern ones, LED LED lights are very toxic for me devices we switch them all off at night but still we might have um i noticed that i switched off the um the 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 hotspot on my phone Mm -hmm. but other phones can still see it so what's going on there (laughs) Mm. right so all these things you know i've been very diligent about looking at and um being more conscious of the toxins that are around us um and yeah this this has been like don't ignore type energy that has served me in that way don't ignore it you know what this is about you know you're extremely sensitive to these things other people can stand them way better than me um but it's like yeah listen to it listen to it um and the listen to it is also take action right energy flows life and houses and land has energy lines and they have flows of energy and i studied feng shui quite a long time ago and one of the things that i learned about it and that i found to be fascinating i tested and it was right was to look at going to a room and see where your energy is flowing and where it's stagnant or it's kind of clogged up right Mm -hmm. and it was like in most western homes your furniture is stuck against the walls which stops the energy from flowing around right stops it so in feng shui you don't have anything against the walls you allow the energy to flow freely when you're looking into a land you need to have the energies flowing that 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 can flow all around so when I walk the land I would see okay where what's stopping me or what's stopping the flow of energy here can I get through there to walk all the edges of your property Mm -hmm. and if there's something that's stopping it you move it you make a channel for that energy to flow freely I remember once in um, uh, 1990s I was living at the Almada house in Chile and it's a very large house and it's all colonial house in the city. It's a city house. And one of the rooms, one of the doors in the rooms had been blocked and actually a wall placed there to that the room, one of the rooms was completely cut off from the rest of the house, basically. Mm-hmm. And when I lived, when I went to live there, my auntie said, you can have those rooms. 
there, like the East Wing <laughs> or something like that. Right? Mm -hmm. You can have those rooms. And um, and I looked and I saw that that particular door the, it used to be there. I remember it from when I was a child, there was a door there. So it was about unblocking, the removing the wall, finding the door and opening it. So I paid a construct a constructor contractor contractor sorry contractor to come and create a new room there like reconnect it. I told him where the door was, and he was working all day on it. I remember a couple of days working and releasing this door. He was having issue after issue after issue, lots of problems, and all of a sudden I was in the kitchen, and I felt the door open. It felt like a whoosh energy. Suddenly, the whole cow started energy was unblocked and it started flowing properly. And I go, whoa, he did it. And I looked over in that second, I looked over and he went flying out of one room, trying to keep himself up because he was kind of falling, <laughs> trying to like flying and he knocked himself against the, the other wall on the other side of the, the room that he had come into. And he's like, whoa, I've never heard that before. I don't know what happened. It was almost like somebody pushed me, he said. Hmm. It was like, and I said, hey, it's all about flow, you know. And the most amazing thing about all that yeah. was that the next day I was chatting with my brother who lived in Spain at the time. And I was in Chile. This is all in Chile, right? And he said, I had the weirdest dream last night. He said, what happened? I dreamt about the blah, blah room. There was the one that was blocked. Mm -hmm. And that I could, I've been trying for years to get through that door to get to the other side, to, to the main part of the house. And I, I haven't been able to, and I tried for years to get through. But last night, it was suddenly, it it just burst open. It was like a, a whoosh. He said, he used the same words, a whoosh. And I was like, flow flown through like it was like thrown and he flew through it in his lucid dream you know his lucid dreaming hmm. flew through it and to the other side and now he was able to access the rest of the house so it's amazing i don't know what happened did you do something there and so i told him all the story about what happened you know what had done what i'd done with this contractor and his experience so the flow of energy is really important and the the whole how is it serving me thing is like figuring out where the blocks are the energetic and the the flows of energy the chi where is it blocked where is it and looking broadly you know it's like if this if this house or this environment is really annoying me where where are the, all these blocks what what's going on here right and then do it you know have walk around where you live or your room right is it full of stuff can you get in and out properly or you know Mm -hmm. how is it working how is it what's it doing um your workshop is it flows properly or is it stuck um your bedroom right and then you can i mean in feng shui there's there's remedies right you can remedy the situation they have lots of little gadgets and things that you can research and do uh to fix the flow of energy the chi energy the flow that goes through your house through your bedroom through your different rooms in the house so, you know, it's like ancient technology, right? But in our bodies, it's also about that. It's like, where's the block? It's like, it does feel that way. It feels like a block that needs to be unblocked. And then you can create and summon believable stories that help, will help you in that healing. And it helps and it works. It really does. Sometimes, uh, well, in, in the case of what you're talking about, it sounded like like where your hands hurt, you can't use your hand. How is it serving you? In the case of then, it was so you don't uh, become obsessed with music instead of uh, doing the things that you're here to do that don't involve becoming obsessed with music, for example. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you want to become, I mean, you're personality is such that you would at the time have gotten obsessed with music and just thought about music and heck with everything else oh absolutely yeah and um that's a thing now another thing is on um, the fall time my body flushes the toxins mm -hmm. that doesn't have a how is this serving me 
purpose that it's stopping you from making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or something. It's just a flush. Yes. It's just the nature of your human body it needs to flush the toxins that you've built up. Right. It doesn't have a bigger purpose. Right, it's the flush, yeah. That is the yeah. purpose. The yeah. purpose is flushing the flush. toxins, for yeah. example. So sometimes it's an apple. Mm -hmm. It's not <coughs> There's no planting larger, apples and right. it's a big thing that mm -hmm. is the end of the world or the start of the world to make you or force you to do things that you wouldn't otherwise do. Sometimes mm -hmm. it is just human body mechanics. Yeah. yeah. So uh, also... Getting tune-ups and um, interfering with things, it's like mucking up the works, right? Yeah. So I, <coughs> I was reading about um, vaccinations from the concept of the viruses were the, the cause of the thing. So they give the little weak virus and they put it in there and that stops the other virus particles from becoming more and it basically stops the entire flush process. Mm-hmm. Which, from the aspect of you're less sick, I guess it's true. You got less sick. I guess but you're not from flushing. the aspect <laughs> of you need to flush this out, and now you've stopped it, it's going to later, and perhaps maybe not a lot later, but sooner or later, it's going to manifest as something even bigger. And I think that bigger thing oftentimes is things like cancers, giant. So anyway, it's 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 valuable to have enough knowledge that you don't interfere with processes, but I also understand the processes and why and what you're holding on to things if you really want to know what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and understand, to me also, it's like understanding that your body is extremely good at getting rid of toxins, but not the levels of toxins that we are subjecting them to these days. It's like, it's an overwhelm of toxins. I mean, I came into the planet, mm -hmm. one of the things I felt was it was a toxic place. It was energetically toxic, psychically toxic, chemically toxic. All right, so, so it, it's like society was toxic, people were toxic, and the paints and plastics, everything was toxic. That's how I grew up. And my sister always said, you know, it's almost like you're allergic to everything because you keep the world at bay. It's like you're trying to push it away. It's like, no, it's like it's, the freaking thing is toxic, you know. I'm just more sensitive to those toxins because I was, God knows why. But anyways, it feels like, yes, those, like, now we have flus every year, but I don't remember that when I was little. I don't remember that happening. People got colds every now and then. Right, but it was, yeah. It's, it felt, it, it felt different, and I remember ha having a sickness. I remember being sick. I think it was mumps or something like that, and it was really unpleasant to me. It was painful. There's fever. There's all these other things, and then afterwards, I decided, you know what? I'm not gonna do this anymore. I'm not gonna get sick anymore. And I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't get sick for a long, long time. As years. I mean, you were, what, three years old, and then you're seven. <laughs> That's like your whole life. The time. entire, more than your half, half your life. And then one day, somebody was sick, and I thought, oh, yeah, I remember. I wonder, if, I think I want to go through that again. And the next day, I was sick. Mm -hmm. I was very, very sick. So, and I then I saw, oh, you choose it. I remember thinking that you choose it. So there, even if your body's flushing or whatever, your body got toxified in the first place, and that how does that serve you? So even if you're sick because it's a natural detoxification of your body that once a year, twice a year, or three times a year, you chose in some sort of way to become in, full of toxins, right? Intoxicated or toxified or whatever, you know. It's still a choice. When we came to live in this RV, I knew what was happening here. And it was still a choice to move into here. And I did a few little things, you know, that will stop it a little bit. You know, lots of plants and 
um, the, the air purifier and making sure you open the windows every day and all these type of things, right? Mm -hmm. To minimize it. But when we use the, all the Wi-Fi's and we use all the iPads and phones and computers and laptops and all that, I know I'm ex extremely aware that all of those are toxins, but I choose to use them. Right. So it's like, how do they serve me? You know, like we we couldn't possibly be having our own podcast show if we didn't use them. So it's serving in that way. But how much do you then need to detoxify? Right. And then when you do have what you call the dump of detoxification, when you get like flu-like symptoms and or other sicknesses, right, a gastroenteritis or whatever it is, uh, I had food poisoning in the past, you know. It's like a immediate, your body's like, get rid of this, right? Mm -hmm. But I chose to eat that food, you see. So it's like it's not completely separate from the other. It's still a choice and how does it serve you at the moment, at the time. There's still that. And people do get upset sometimes when they have cancer or post-traumatic stress or whatever, and I say, how is that serving you? It's like, I'm not doing it for because it helps him or serves him. Like, what are you talking about? They get really upset about it. But then if they go past the upset, they start looking at go, oh, wow, yeah. It's serving me to see that I'm actually in a very toxic environment and I have to deal with that. I have to get rid of some of these toxins in my life, right? For example. And, um... <clears throat> Yeah, so it's it's like it does go back, you know, it does move back to that. It's still, at the end of the day, still, how is this serving me? Even if it's a natural thing that happens to your body. Because I knew people, I've known people, and I still know people who haven't been sick, not with a cold, not even a cold for years and years. And they're still in toxic environments and all the rest so what's going on there right well there's multiple things though that's the point sometimes it's just an apple in this case but you choose you to can, eat the apple why did you choose to eat the apple in, in this case you use wi-fi for your computer when you <clears> could <throat> use a hard line but to get a hard line would be requiring altering our lifestyle to the degree that we'd have to live where there's a line that comes in mm -hmm. and that isn't where we live we mm -hmm. live where there is no line because we want to be outside the influence of a great number of Wi-Fi's. Wi <laughs> we have our own Wi-Fi, but we don't have ours, plus our neighbors and our other and neighbors and our other neighbor and our other neighbor mm -hmm. and the guy on top of us and the six floors above us too, mm -hmm. and the multiple frequencies and the multiple. So we have a cleaner electro environment, and we use it. But I consciously, each day that you're on a computer all day in the morning. I consciously figure out how and what way can I encourage us to go outside and do something away from all of the, you know, electronics. Yeah, in the go forest, the mountains, go for the hike, the river. go to the beach, go to the res, go to the fossil beach, go up the mountains, go for a hike, go to the water, go to the extreme, go rock light, whatever. Mm -hmm. So temper that with the other so that they will neutralize each other to some degree. Create a little bit of sweat move the cycle, move the body, move the blood, move the water, re-solidify it, you know, flush. Mm -hmm. So if you ingest, then flush. And try to consciously do that. If you consciously do it, then probably you won't have a, a larger need. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. my choice and your choice to have me in your life to do that with you. <laughs> yeah. And your own choice to do that too. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you chose, you, you're you like, I'm going to go to McDonald's for a month <laughs> so that I have to have a big flush. I mean, really? <laughs> That's, um, I don't know. Mm. On the other hand, a little exposure to little toxin means you have resistance to exposure to toxin and the pathways to releasing it are built up better up to a point. And everybody's body's different. Mm -hmm. It's not like there's any one type of body. Right. There's many different bodies, many different strengths, many different capabilities, many different, um, I will call them 
hangovers from past lives. <laughs> yeah. Many different plans for experience this life. Many different um, concepts of what a life is supposed to be. So maybe this one's about karma. I need to pay shit back. <laughs> and you brought that one with you. And you still want that one. So you do stuff. So, yeah, the, the details are almost infinite. Oh, yeah. It's like the combination of a ten-number lock. The combinations are almost untangleable. Yeah. But if the um, your particular individual experience, whatever experience it is that someone else is having, or I'm having or you're having, they are individual. I think that's kind of the point. So yeah, somebody can have a life where they eat junk food and they don't get sick and they drink whiskey and they live to 110 <laughs> every day. But if you were to drink whiskey every day, I don't think you'd make it 110. No, probably not at the end of the week even. <laughs> right, different bodies. Because uh, alcohol brings in demons. <laughs> <laughs> they would have a fun time trying to take you out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they would find a good way. Yes. One that opens your, that you're um, susceptible to temptation to uh -huh. one of your open doors. Yep. Right. So, I mean, there are people who believe if you eat any carbohydrates or whatever, you're going to get sick right away. And it's bad for you. But there's Japanese people and Chinese people that eat rice every day, every meal, every single time. Yeah. And there, some of them live to 110 too. Mm -hmm. So your body is unique. And the experience you're having with your... Um, yeah, your experience is a canary in a sense. You're very sensitive, but you're very sensitive. Mm -hmm. You're sensitive, but you're also sensitive. Sensitive is sensitive. What do you mean? <laughs> you're sensitive to environment, but you're also sensitive to environment. They sound like the exact same thing. They're the exact same words, but they're different. Sensitive meaning you can be impacted by the toxins in the environment easily. Sensitive meaning you can perceive the things in the environment also that other people More like have the senses. difficulty with. Right. So, is it true that with sensitivity comes sensitivity? No, no, I don't know. I don't think so. I seem to notice a tendency for that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I have. I suppose it's one of those things we could uh, evaluate. You know, um, I have friends who are, I guess, Robust would be a good word, right? Mm -hmm. Robust as in, uh, you know, it's cold outside and they're in shorts and a t-shirt and then you tell them, hey man, it's cold out here. And they go, really? Oh. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I didn't know. And every day, every day, no matter what it's doing, they're, they're fine. They're not shivering or nothing. They're robust. And they can uh, ingest vast quantities of uh, toxins. toxins, like alcohol and cigarette, well, not all cigarettes are probably bad for you, but definitely the kind they smoke are. Yeah. <clears throat> and drugs even. And they can do that for 30 years and still exist. <laughs> <laughs> and not even get sick. Yeah. Of course, at some point, you know, they do become overwhelmed. But yeah. the point is, is something that would take you out in a week. They are doing it for 40 years and... And they're not necessarily there, sensitive to the what's going on on the planet. planet. <laughs> and they have no idea what's going on on the planet or who's doing what, doing um, what where, yeah. sensitivity-wise, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So there might be a connection there, too. Maybe. More open to means more open to mm -hmm. both things. And uh, in a, in a high-frequency reality where you're sensitive, you're not going to be exposed sensitively to low frequency inputs right, right. which <clears throat> it might be that you're designed for a high frequency reality honey. probably yeah yeah and the other day we went to the res i think it was the res. oh no 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 port angeles we went to port angeles yesterday and um as soon as we started getting close to the city mm -hmm. my energy plummeted from the sense of sadness Mm. and despair and it was like whoa you know the the frequency that human bodies are giving out 
after being so badly injured and many of them many people are losing people you know they're like people are dying left right and center from unexplained short illnesses and it was so intense that I was like I couldn't even speak, you know, it's like... I was wondering I just... what cat got your tongue or whatever. <laughs> Suddenly it was like... You were very quiet for yeah. that, like an hour. Yeah, it's like I couldn't even speak. I had to just... Just had to race in and get me my frugal burger and my french fry and some propane and a little bit of gasoline. And we and were, were going like to start to see a couple of, you know, like double whites. Oh yeah, we're looking at... Because we just can't resist another possible house for the res which we can't have for a couple of years but we're still gonna look still gonna like well we didn't even ask and they say it's impossible i didn't say anything but you (laughs) just rushed out of there i don't know maybe you sensed it too oh i sensed it i was like it's like no now is not the time for hanging out in town honey yeah especially to do something that we already know we shouldn't do yet i was like whoa yeah and we went where did we went I don't remember. I was just trying to get... Uh, where we went was the die. Global Ascension <laughs> Center. Oh, and right. Mr. Rock. Yeah. And even there, it was you didn't have energy or anything. energy to even stay. Mm-hmm. Just had to get me home. Mm-hmm. We got home and... Uh, I went on the brown gas machine. I went on the brown gas for about an hour mm-hmm. and it seemed to revive you. A little bit. I felt better this morning, but I still feel the enormous enormity of the toxins, energetic, especially like that those waves. I don't know what it is, but it's those wave things. It feels like there's no exit, you know, no, no nowhere to to rest from it. There's really. no respite. No. No respite. Yeah. There's like we tried the woods, we tried the ocean, we tried different things, and they bring a little bit of comfort you know a little bit of uh positiveness to like support Mm -hmm. but there's no respite there's no getting away from it it's it's everywhere that energy is everywhere i suppose that's why the lemurians suggested that you become familiar with it so you know it so it doesn't take you by shock and surprise yeah i suppose that's why your newsletter where you discussed it in detail that um, you have the choice of react and respond and react is going to probably be um, not make it worse not supportive of a high frequency paradigm that uh, one of the things one of the best things to do acknowledging that it's an artificially induced toxic environment for a purpose of carrying out a split for you, as a high-frequency embodier, um, it's not for you. Right. <laughs> but you can see it and alter your response to it. Yeah. It doesn't sweep you up, right? Right. The ways that it can sweep you up are by holding onto the bank, trying <laughs> to stop things from changing, keep them the way they are. Yeah. That can overwhelm you by isolating yourself from everybody else so that you're like um hiding in a cave you think nobody's going to be able to bother you or find you or deal with you or anything you're still going to have this wave come but you won't have assistance of multiple seers of high frequency saying oh hey what guess what (laughs) i'm out of it (laughs) yeah yeah and you'll know oh something i did last night we have that Mayu water swirler. Yeah. And I put the water in there, and I've been having a hard time with the water because it kind of it got dirty. Yeah, it gets stinky really fast. It gets stinky After, because it's growing in there. Yeah. And so I tried bleach because naturally, I think, what's the strongest thing to get rid of everything? Bleach. So I put bleach it through the Didn't washing work. machine. Put it in a washing machine. In the, the dishwasher, I mean. Yeah. That don't work. It's a ceramic thing work. in there. Is The porous thing is filled with uh, something. something alive. It's turned into a swamp. Yeah. And I can't get the swamp to go away. And I'm sorry, just drinking swamp water doesn't really taste <laughs> That's that boring. good. So I've been ignoring it for a long time. And then I clean it and then let it dry and then try again. Mm-hmm. I did it like three or four or five, six, ten times. Different now. Didn't things, work. Yeah. And last night I had epiphany. I wish I knew what the German word for epiphany was. <laughs> I'm guessing it's pretty cool. <laughs> epiphany. Yeah. Where's your phone, honey? Can you make it say epiphany, epiphany? in German? Okay, let's see. I don't know if I can use it right now. Let's have a look. 
<clears throat> okay. Epiphany. E P I. Wait, wait, wait. Germany. Um. Oh, I can't do it because we have airplane mode is on. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Turn off. Well, I can't do it on your phone because you're recording us. Yeah, exactly. What are All you trying to ding, do? Ding, ding, ding. Mess up our recording. I know. Jeez. Okay. I thought that um, this was an app that just downloaded the data into your phone, but apparently not. You need to be connected to the cloud for it to work. Maybe mine will work. Okay, I'm going to say Epiphany in German. Epiphany in German. Guess what it is. What, Epiphany? Epiphany. <laughs> <laughs> epiphany. <laughs> oh, no. That is definitely... That's hilarious. Epiphany. 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 <laughs> it's definitely not what I was expecting. Epiphany. <laughs> okay, well, it's an epiphany. Anyway, it's last an night... epiphany. I took some of Fred's um, silver, 500 part per million colloidal stuff. And I poured in the water into the Mayu, and then I poured in enough to put five parts per million in our Mayu of silver water. Uh -huh. And I turned it on, I said, this will fix it. And anyway, that'll be good, because a very low part per million of silver, and it's just light yellow, and structured water, because we were reading about the structured water in our book last night, remember? Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, effect of the silver colloidal on whatever's growing in there anyway probably clean that out but when i turned it on and got it going guess what it created double helix oh well, it did yeah it did i've like never seen that before i have never it's seen always that before doing either. one like vortex kind of you can see yeah, that it looks like vortex. a whirlpool in yeah, there, a whirlpool. yeah. And in this case double it made helix. a double helix yeah. whirlpool yeah it did and i was like oh my cool. god so we drank a half a glass of it each this <laughs> morning yeah and uh i think it's a new elixir Okay, <laughs> you've been invented a new elixir. A new elixir, yes. Nice. That was my epiphany, and it didn't taste like a swamp. And it did not. It had double helix energy. It seemed like new elixir. New elixir. Nice elixir. Nice elixir. Nice elixir. <laughs> That's the German. <laughs> so, if you have one of these Mayus. I recommend you give it a try and see what your results are too because I'm thinking it's a lot better than swamp water. Mm -hmm. And I have to apologize for all the noise that we've been having in the background, but our beautiful Hopi, Dan and Fred are creating a beautiful deck for us. An infinity deck. Yes, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. But yeah. they're right here. <laughs> He's putting in the, the rock. Um, landing spot, oh. or whatever you call those things. Those pavers, blocks, pavers, the pavers, yeah. Some tile work. It's like a Roman road. Mm -hmm. It's pretty ideal. Pretty ideal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's the two infinities of different levels made out of nice pressure treated lumber. And um, yeah, the end of it, instead of having a rail, so it's, it's really not far off the ground. No, it's not very far. It's just open, so it looks like, like an infinity pool with no water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> infinity pool in the water. Yeah, just exactly like that. Yeah. It's really fantastic. beautiful. Yeah, I love it. And it keeps a lot of the grass out of our house. It does. Yeah. Because in the past, it's we so were... so nice just to step out there. It's so beautiful. And the mud. Yeah, yeah. It, I think you could put a chair out there. I think so, too. Yeah. So the next thing we got to do, we're going to build a sunroom out of the on mm -hmm. the deck, on part of it at least. Yep. Is that your idea? Yes. And then lots of plants. And lots of and plants. Lots of ventilation. So we open the door. Basically, it's a sliding glass door is our mm -hmm. front door. Yep. Open that door and you're basically inside outside plant. You live in a greenhouse. Yes. <laughs> Pretty perfect. I mean, if we open our door right now, we live in a greenhouse. It, well, you, literally, greenhouse. it is green everywhere. It's green everywhere. It's not a house. It's cold and wet. <laughs> it's too cold. And so windy. <laughs> <laughs> windy and wet. Yeah. So with a little bit of a sunroom opened up. We'll have outside, inside, and a temperature that's um, comfortable. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah. So do work to make your environment supportive beautiful. Yes. and beautiful. 
and uh, negatively ioned. Yes. <laughs> I think that's good. Yes. Anything else on your mind? I love you, mon chéri. In French. <laughs> Do you want me to give Je you a little bit of help? Je t'aime, mon chéri. <laughs> no, you want me to give you a little help? Okay. I'd say je t'aime, mon chéri. I love you, honey. Let's see what that is. Oof. Oof. <laughs> um, je je t'aime, chérie. Oh, that's what I said. Je t'aime. Je t'aime. Je t'aime. Je t'aime. Mon chéri. Je t'aime, Je t'aime, chéri. Je t'aime, chéri. Chéri. <laughs> Julian, we have to do a French case for the end of this one. Okay. <laughs> I, don't I don't know if you guys want to hear that. No. <laughs> I don't think they make sense. Like, this is better. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Until next time. Are you complete, honey? Sure. Oh, thank you, honey. <laughs>